Hi guys, today I will talk about sunglasses, and no, not mine, but for the DJI Mini 3 Pro with ND filters. Let's dive in. Okay guys, so I'll tell you how my test will look like. First of all, I will test the normal lens, which is already fitted on the camera. Then I will test the ND16, ND64 and ND256 ND filters. And I will do an object tracking and the drone will fly in circles. Then I will do a fly over the grass. I'll try to fly quite close to, to, to the grass. So you'll see what's the difference between quite sharp and not very uh, eye-pleasing video footage and how does it look like with ND filters when it's actually well, when there is motion blur. Well, I should stop talking and start flying. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. So I'm using manual mode for everything. The shutter speed is 1 4,000th of a second. ISO is 100 f 1.7 white balance 55. 100 kelvins and you will see what's the difference between a really sharp and not really eye-pleasing image comparing to the image from the drone with ND filters. Let me know in the comments if you see the difference. It's time to take off. So now I'm doing an object tracking, point of interest. So you'll see, hopefully you'll see the difference soon and the drone is orbiting around me and the medium speed so i hope you're gonna see the difference once i've changed it to filter nd16 from just this normal one Now I'll fly just above the grass and let me know if you see the difference between the footage without the ND filter and with the ND filter at 16. I haven't shown you this yet, but the ND filters from the DJI are, came in this really nice plastic cover, a box, a small box. <laughs> and as you can see, those filters are really, really tiny. And now I'm gonna mount the ND16 filter on the drone and we will repeat the test. Okay, I've managed to actually go down with the shutter speed of one over 200 and I'll put it into POI, a medium speed and then hit go. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if you've noticed, but the tide is coming in. And the sea har moved a bit. Okay, so once again, I lower the drone and we're gonna fly over the grass. And let me know if you see the difference. The drone is just behind me. It is time to change the filter from ND16 to ND64. So that's how the ND16 filter looks like on, uh, on the lens of this drone. Okay, so I've changed the filter from ND16 to ND64 and once again, I've changed the shutter speed. It's now one over 120, but I'm pretty sure that after the takeoff, I'm gonna have to adjust it again. Yep, and once again, I need to adjust it. So yeah, I had to change it. <laughs> it's a 1 60th of a second. So it's exactly the same as, the, as what's the shutter speed on the camera. I recorded 30 frames per second and shutter speed is 60. So this is going to be exactly the same. Nice motion blur. Well, I can see it straight away. It looks much better. And I hopefully I can see a motion blur even on the remote control. Or maybe I'm talking nuisance. <laughs>
Okay, so now we're gonna do a really fast fly over the grass. So let me know in the comments if you see the difference. Okay, it is time to change the ND64 filter to ND256. And I will probably gonna have to boost, bump the ISO to compensate for the sunglasses for my drone. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to bump the ISO from 100 to 200 or even more, depending on how it looks when I take off. The ND256 on the DJI Mini 3 Pro mounted. So I had to bump the, I bump the ISO to 400 and uh, shutter speed is still 1 60th of a second. Object tracking, I've selected myself and now just and go, and go, show your best. And guys, I really encourage you to use variable ND filters or even any ND filters when you're recording videos because it will lower your shutter speed and it will give you that cinematic motion blur. To be fair, when I'm vlogging, I, I'm not always bothered about the shutter speed. And then sometimes just to compensate the really bright light, the shutter speed is like one one thousand of a second or something like that. Or I will change just the aperture. Okay, so I lower the drone again, just above the grass. And I will do it in sport mode and you will see the motion blur. Okay, now I'll try to fly just above myself, actually. So, <laughs> let's hope I won't crash the drone. What do you think? What do you think? Let me know. Okay, so I will do, I will change the ND256 to ND64 and because I think that that played the ball the best in current conditions. What I will do, I will show you the difference between a normal mode and FPV mode because in FPV mode you feel like on a plane so whenever you turn the horizon will change as well. When you're in a normal mode the gimbal keeps the camera steady so you basically you don't see that the drone is turning, barely visible. So now it's in normal mode, so whenever I turn left, you see how the drone moves. So let's go back and I'll show you the FPV mode. And as you can see, when I turn, the angle it's changing as well. It's just like on an aircraft. Every single small move of the joystick makes the camera turn. All right, I still have 67% of battery left. How did you like the tests? Let me know in the comment section. Right, so that's the end of today's episode. I'm really in love with this ND64 filter. And D16 is really nice. I think I'm, it's gonna be nice. It will be nice for like an overcast, slightly later time of the day, not actually a full sun. The ND256, I think it's probably gonna be for like mountains with snow and stuff, because it's really, really dark. But yeah, nonetheless, let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Let me know if you're buying one of them, the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And let me know if you like the remote control, if you use one. And if you're buying one, I strongly recommend going for this one. I know there's plenty of being sent online about range and stuff, but to be totally honest, you can't see this beyond 600 meters. You can't. If you're flying within 
visual line of sight, this is enough. Drop the comment down below for algorithm. Give this video a thumbs up for algorithm as well. And obviously, if you like the video. Uh, and what else? Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, A Big Feel Online. I've reached 100 subscribers and now I was able to claim my name. My Polish YouTube channel is called Big Phil and my English one is Big Phil Online. So yeah, thank you to all of you guys who are my subscribers. Thank you again. Uh, and yeah, please, if you're not a subscriber yet, definitely subscribe. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.